Welcome to this video about neurons. Here we have a neuron, also known as a nerve cell. Just like a normal cell, it has a nucleus, a cell membrane, and other components that a normal body cell has. However, on top of that, it also has these branches called dendrites. This is where information comes into a neuron, travels through the axon, and goes out of the neuron through the axon terminal. Now the neuron can either be at rest, or it can be firing electrical impulses, also known as action potentials. In this video, we're going to look at what happens both at rest and during an action potential to the neuron. Here's a clue. It's all to do with different charges moving about. So let's zoom into this area and see what happens in more detail. Okay, so this is a cell membrane. That means this must be inside the neuron and this area is outside the neuron. Now on the membrane we have a sodium potassium pump. This is a carrier protein that pumps out three sodiums and pumps in two potassium ions. And it uses ATP to do this. So that means this is a form of active transport. The sodium ions on the outside will try to get in by diffusion. To do this they're going to need sodium ion channels. Since they're polar, that means they're going to need ion channels to go through the membrane. Unfortunately, the sodium ion channels are voltage gated, meaning that they will only open at a specific voltage. And right now, they're closed, so the sodium is going to have to stay outside. This causes the concentration of sodium on the outside to increase. The potassium ions, on the other hand, will try to diffuse out. Again, they're also going to need ion channels. The potassium ion channels are always open. That means they can leave. Because diffusion is all about balancing ions, that means if we have two potassiums on the inside, one will go out and one will stay in, so that both sides are balanced. So overall, we have four positive ions on the outside. Now, of course, we have way more than four, but we're saying relatively. Four positive ions on the outside and one positive ion on the inside. That means the outside is more positive than the inside. This difference in charge across the membrane is also known as a potential difference and it has a value of around minus 70 millivolts. This is also known as the resting membrane potential. We can plot this on a graph and we can see minus 70 millivolts over here represents the resting membrane potential. Now this graph, which represents potential difference, the numbers are always referring to what's inside the cell. So that means whatever charge we see on the y-axis of this graph is referring to inside the cell. So right now it says minus 70, which means the inside is more negative compared to the outside. So this resting membrane potential can be like this forever, if not stimulated. But we haven't come all this way for nothing. Let's see what happens when the neuron gets stimulated. So a quick recap. We have a sodium potassium pump that uses ATP to pump out three sodiums and bring in two potassiums. The sodium channel is closed, so sodium stays outside and the concentration of sodium outside increases. The potassium channel is open and since we've brought in two potassiums, one will go out and one will stay in so that they are balanced by diffusion. Overall, the outside is more positive than the inside and we get a resting membrane potential of minus 70 millivolts. Let's say at this moment right here, the neuron was stimulated. The energy from the stimulus will cause some sodium channels to open up. This means the long awaited sodium ions can now diffuse into the neuron from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. This is a type of facilitated diffusion because it uses ion channels. The movement of sodium ions into the neuron causes the inside to become slightly positive. So we can see here that the potential difference starts to become slightly positive. Once the membrane potential reaches minus 55 millivolts, this is also known as a threshold. This causes lots and lots of voltage gated sodium channels to open up. These guys love the minus 55 millivolt charge. Because of this, 
more sodium ions can enter the neuron and the charge flies up to plus 40 millivolts. We can now see, according to the graph, the inside of the neuron is going to be more positive than the outside. So the poles have swapped. This is also known as depolarization. At plus 40, the sodium channels spontaneously close. And instead, voltage-gated potassium channels open up. So now, will potassium enter or will it leave? We can see that the concentration of potassium on the inside and outside of the neuron are the same. So it's not going to move because of a concentration gradient. Instead, they're going to move because of an electrochemical gradient. Potassium is a positive ion. And it will be attracted to negative stuff. We can see the outside is more negative than the inside. So that means potassium ions will leave the neuron to go to the negative area. So potassium ions are moving down the electrochemical gradient. Because potassium ions are leaving the cell, that means the inside of the cell will start to become negative again. Once we get to minus 70 millivolts, these voltage-gated potassium channels will start to close. However, they're quite slow to close, which means while they're closing, some extra sneaky potassium ions are going to make their way out of the neuron. Because these extra potassium ions have managed to sneak their way out of the neuron through the ion channel, because we've lost extra potassium ions, that means the charge becomes even more negative than intended. It drops all the way to minus 100. Eventually, the voltage-gated potassium channels close, and the neuron goes back to resting membrane potential, minus 70 millivolts. Okay, let's look at this graph in a bit more detail and label the different parts. Starting at minus 70, we have the resting membrane potential. Then a stimulus occurs and causes some sodium channels to open up. This creates a generator potential. Once it hits minus 55 millivolts, many more sodium channels open up and there's a huge rush of sodium into the neuron. This causes the charge to go from minus 55 all the way to plus 40. And this part is called depolarization. The reason it's called depolarization is because the charge of the membrane is swapping from negative to positive. At plus 40, the sodium channels closed and potassium channels opened up. Then potassium ions left the neuron and the charge started to go back down. This part is called repolarization. Again, the charge is going from plus back to the original minus. However, because of the slow closing potassium channels, it managed to go a little bit lower than intended, all the way to minus 100. This part is called hyperpolarization. Eventually, those extra voltage-gated potassium channels closed and the membrane went back to resting membrane potential. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.